Hey guys, I know it's been a minute, but welcome back to the next vlog. I'm actually so excited to be even talking right now. But, um, so we're starting this vlog off with a off-season glute workout. My feedback was to bring in those glute ham that glute hamstring tie-in, which is basically in the bikini division and wellness and other divisions. But basically in bodybuilding, the glute hamstring tie-in is where the glutes and hamstrings meet. So when bikini competitors turn to the back, they're looking not for shredded, you know, glutes and hamstrings, but they're looking for that round, shapely, sculpted, bubbly glute. And you need to be conditioned enough to see a little bit of that glute ham tie-in. So that means you have to have big enough glutes and hamstrings for it to pop. And you need to be lean enough, but not too lean where it's shredded and striated but you need to be lean enough where your glute ham tie-in shows. So as you see me doing here, I'm doing some activation uh, movements. Um, we usually do not use our glutes. We're sitting on them, driving. Um, they're not really a muscle we use a lot. So in order to get those uh, muscle, that, that muscle, you know, awakened, I'm like caffeinated right now. I can't even talk. Um, we need to activate them. You don't always need to activate you them. You feel your glutes right away, you don't need to activate. But if you have trouble feeling them, then it's a good idea to do that. So I do about two sets of 25 reps. Um, honestly, I just do it until I feel it. And I don't start counting as actual reps until it burns. Um, and then I go into heavy hip thrusts. Um, I, If you wanna grow your glutes or any muscle, you need to be following a progressive overload training approach. And what that basically means is that you're progressively overloading a muscle over time. So our body adapts, right? So say you do something hard for the first time. It's scary. It's super hard. You never want to do it again, but then you have to keep doing it. And all of a sudden it's easy, right? In order for you to grow as a person, you have to get out of your comfort zone again and again and again in order to grow. It's the same thing goes for training. You can't just go do random workouts and expect, you know, differences unless you're a newbie. It's called newbie gains. But, you know, the more you get into the gym, you actually want to, you know, uh, get a muscle to grow. You're going to have to focus on growing it um, by doing the same compound movements for a certain period of time, about like six to eight weeks um, and focus on getting stronger in that movement. And that doesn't always mean heavier. Yes, you want to go heavier, but that doesn't mean uh, you sacrifice form and mind muscle connection for a heavier weight. I personally don't count a heavier weight as a PR, a personal record, unless I feel the mind muscle connection. So um, this is pretty much the workout that I've been doing. Hip thrusts, abductions, hamstrings, and I like to target every part of the glute and um my hamstrings so um these are just some staples that i do and that's pretty much it so i hope you enjoy the rest of the vlog I can.
Hey y'all. So, I wanted to come on here and talk a little bit. Let me see if I can get some extra light. No, okay. Let's just, uh, <laughs> the struggle of lighting. I'm gonna turn this so I stop staring at myself, but yes, I'm in my pink cheetah pajamas. But um, I'm about to go to bed, but I wanted to come on here and talk a little bit because I was just like the whole reason, the whole point that I started my YouTube channel was to document my journey and document my growth and my struggles and share it with anyone who found inspiration in it. And I was watching my old videos and I was just like, wow, like, um, like, I don't know how to explain it. But I want to stay true to why I started this and not be embarrassed or I don't know, like not think that it's important if it's not prep or if it's not, you know, being lean or I don't know how to explain it. But I always struggle post-show. Like I think every athlete and bodybuilder struggles hard post-show. Like I haven't had one post-show experience where I was like on track like the whole fucking time. Like it just, it just hasn't happened yet. And when that day comes, <laughs> that'll be a victory. But as of right now, it hasn't. So there, let me explain kind of what happens post-show a little bit to your body um, as a bodybuilder. So you're, you're spending all this time getting extremely lean, not like athlete lean, like you're getting stage lean. So you are hitting usually like your essential fat levels or even below that. So, you know, girls are getting 14% body fat, which actually is like on the more healthier end, healthier end of, you know, bodybuilding. Like me, like I kind of did 14% body fat last show. Um, but then there, you, you know, I'm probably gonna have to get down to like 12%, 10% body fat next time around, which that is when things get alarming um, for your body. So what happens post-show is say you have like a nice post-show dinner, you have some dessert, maybe you go to brunch the next day and you're supposed to be back on track Monday, right? That is like the traditional bodybuilder, you know, post-show plan. But the thing is, your body is so lean, it is stressed out, you've been doing tons of cardio, in a deficit for who knows how long, and then you have those meals, and your body goes like haywire, like at least mine does, and all it wants is more food and more food and more food. So it is very common to fall into easily binge eating cycles and overeating cycles, and then wanna restrict because you feel bad and you don't feel like an athlete and you fucked up and you feel puffy and bloated and nasty, blah, blah, blah. So then you wanna cut back or maybe hop into another prep and then you binge again because you're not giving your body what it needs. You're not following a proper reverse. You're, you're, and, and then the cycle happens. So that is pretty much what happened to me. Um, and I have rebounded before and a rebound is basically um, when you're so, so lean, whether you're a contest prep or not, when you lose a bunch of weight and then you just completely start rapidly overeating, um, your body gains, you're in an anabolic phase. So anabolic, like you're very sensitive to growth of, of body fat and muscle, but mainly body fat. Some studies show that you actually can gain new body fat cells, um, which isn't fun. And it makes it harder and longer to diet the next time around. So it's just a huge consequence all around, but that's what rebounding is. And um, it's very fast, it's very rapid, and it's very consequential, if that's a word. But um, I've rebounded before, but 
it's been the pain of it has been very temporary so what i mean by that is like my first show i rebounded because i had absolutely no knowledge and my coach at the time didn't set a plan for me um didn't you know educate me on the post-show experience i literally didn't know and i thought that i could just go back to i had like no idea so i rebounded but i did an eight week contest prep after like two months so the pain wasn't like bad like if you know what i mean so like it's like i had that extra body fat for a very short period of time and then i was like lean again then with my new coach um i actually followed my reverse diet but i i kind of over ate really bad the first week so i had like an inflammation a little bit of things like that maybe gained like one pound of body fat and like that's it I think this is something that needs to be talked about and you know I it needs to be talked about because it's not talked about and I know a lot of you know girls and whoever else other athletes might hide it or try to uh, act like I don't know like I don't know but I'm definitely guilty of that it's not that I try to hide it but it's embarrassing a little. It's kind of like, especially with social media, it's like everyone's been cheering you on and you're getting so lean. And then all of a sudden it's like, you're thick again and like really fast. And it's like, whoa, whoa, like what the fuck happened? <laughs> That's what happened. And I don't feel bad about it because I am learning and this is a part of my journey. And one day I will conquer that post-show experience. But as of right now, I think now I'm just, I'm dealing with the consequences. Like, like the, the fat is here, it's, it's staying. And you know, the thing is, I don't like, I'm comfortable with my body. Like I like it cause I like my curves. Um, you know, I have more muscle this time around. So I feel more comfortable. But um, with that being said, I know that I'm going that I've made the experience harder on myself than I needed to. Um, and thank God I have an amazing coach that has been there for me since day one to help me through this process. But um, I need to be focusing on growth, like having my fucking calories up for a consistent period of time. Like I need to build trust with my body again because I feel like if I look at a food, my body is gonna be like, bitch, you better eat all that and then some. Like my body is, it, it, I need to focus on recovering and resting like literally internally because I'm gonna be prepping hard next year, hard and long next year. And it's like, I can't be doing this. And if that means I have to be uncomfortable with the consequences of putting on extra body fat faster than needed, then so be it. And I've learned my lesson and I, I don't want to, you know, cause I don't know what the future holds, but like, I, I need to prioritize different things and learn from my mistakes. So, um, I see my coach Monday. I was supposed to see him tomorrow but off my chest. I just want to always keep it real with y'all. And you know, this is my journey this is who I am and I'm not fucking perfect and I'm not trying to act like I'm perfect. Um, yeah, I can be a fuck up. I can be a great athlete and I am a great athlete and I'm a champion. Okay. But we all make mistakes and I hope to be an example of learning from it. So, and before I go, I just want to give some tips. If you are struggling post-show first, and I'm just going to wipe them out. All right. <laughs> so first things first, have a plan, speak to your coach. If your coach doesn't have a plan, if they leave you hanging in the dust, if they are not giving you attention, drop that bitch. Um, second, up your protein if you can. Protein will help to keep you satiated. Satiety is so important in your reverse diet to keep your appetite under control because your appetite is going to be insane. Three, try to lower cardio as fast as you can and get calories up as fast as you can. Yeah, we all wanna stay pretty lean. Obviously it depends on if you're competing again and this and that, but it's very important to get your calories up as fast as you can, okay? You're not going to get obese, I promise. So yeah, I'm done now. I'm tired, I'm so tired. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later, bye.